The Burden of Proof and Atheism Atheism, taken from Greek meaning godless plus ism, two definitions and perhaps more exist for this noun. The doctrine or belief that there is no God, or the disbelief in the existence of supreme being or beings. The question of whether or not an atheist has any burden of proof has been asked multiple times and raised in various different debates as of late. For purposes of persuasionary dialogue and within the confines of a technical structure of a debate, anybody that makes any claim has the burden of proof. Some atheists have claimed that they have absolutely no burden of proof. However, within the confines of debate structure, claiming that you have no burden of proof requires that you prove that you have no burden of proof. Neither one of these definitions requires any burden of proof whatsoever. Believing and or disbelieving anything requires no proof on your side. The burden of proof does apply when somebody says there is no X, where X equals whatever value you are after. In this case, the person that says there is no God now has the burden of proof to show that that statement is true. Saying I disbelieve requires absolutely no proof because it is simply a reflection of one's personal views. Take note of the type of dialogue that you are engaging in. If I make the statement that I believe in Bigfoot, you might engage me in an inquiry dialogue by beginning with the question, why? I would then give you reasons that I affirm this belief to be true. If you, however, ask me to prove that it is true, I might then need to engage you in the type of dialogue of a persuasionary type. I would then need to give you some sort of evidence to Bigfoot's existence. The type of dialogue shift is important because the amount of reasons I need to give changes and I additionally need to add evidence to my line of reasoning in order to engage you in the persuasionary dialogue. If we are simply an information seeking, all I need to do is provide you a reason why I believe that Bigfoot exists. I do not need to offer any proof whatsoever. Additionally, when we do change, I ne simply need to show you enough proof to prove that my belief is justified rather than absolutely proving beyond a shadow of a doubt that Bigfoot does exist. Depending on how much evidence and persuasion I am able to muster in my argument may or may not shift your view on Bigfoot's existence or not. If we were to engage in such a persuasionary dialogue in front of an audience, my goal would be change to persuade them that this is true rather than persuading you as an individual. Regardless of the change of venue, my burden does not shift. I still need to show you reasons and evidence if we are in the persuasionary dialogue. If we are simply engaged in information seeking dialogue, I simply again need to provide reasons why I believe Bigfoot exists rather than show evidence. Well, is this true for theists as well? Absolutely. For those who simply make a statement that they believe in God, they have absolutely no burden of proof. It is when they say there is a God that they suddenly gain the burden of proof. Take note, it is important to engage in understanding the basics of philosophy. Look up what strong theist, weak theist, strong atheist and weak atheist all mean before engaging in this type of dialogue. I am not here to argue for either side of this particular subject. I am here to merely state that based upon your statements, you may or may not have a burden of proof. Simply saying one is a theist or one is an atheist implies no burden of proof whatsoever until you initiate an inquiry dialogue to find out what they mean by that. Do they simply believe in God or are they saying that God is true? Do they simply disbelieve in God or are they saying there is no God? 
depending upon this will depend upon what sort of burden of proof they have, if any. Two questions to test you on this new knowledge. Post your answers in the comments below. If I say that I have no orange in my hand, do I have the burden of proof? If I say that I am holding an invisible orange, do I have the burden of proof? If I say that I believe that I am holding an orange, do I have the burden of proof? And if I say I disbelieve that you are holding an orange behind your back, do I have the burden of proof? Post your comments below. Take care.